This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Coast to the United States. I hate your chapeau, Stephen Kravitz. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I hate your chapeau. Why is that? Because it's too cool. Well, I'm a cool cat. And because I, I wear hats and I don't, I don't have one. Well, they have a haberdashery, I'm sure, in New York City. Well, wait a minute. Take it off a second. I, I, I never noticed this before, but I should. You have a full head of hair. Now, uh, how can you, yes. as a good Jew, how can you do that? My brother has a full head of hair also. Really? Son of a bitch. You know, most, most Jewish guys go bald. Right. They get that. First, they get the yarmulke. With well, that spot I, I, in the back. I think that's why the yarmulke was invented. <laughs> That could be. Yeah, you know, it was invented to take care of that, you know. Right. To cover it up. They say it's because you should not have your head exposed to God. Something like that. Yeah, so you put a yarmulke on, and that is an exposure to God. But the real reason was some guy started going bald back in, like, the second century and said, let's start wearing yarmulkes. Well, let's put a hat on. I wonder why they call them yarmulkes. We never I have questioned. no idea. As Jews, we never question these things. I'm sure in Hebrew it means like little hat or beanie or something like that. Yeah, beanie from God. That's what it means. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, uh, um, uh, I, 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 as a Jew, I'm, I'm, I used to have uh, business cards at uh, Live 105 that they made up for me. I didn't ask them to do it. They just did it. It says Alex Bennett and then under it, bad Jew. <laughs> I still have them here. Uh, I bet you do. Bad Jew. And uh, uh, as a bad Jew, I don't understand everything. You know? I Who mean, does? I, Nobody I, does. Well, I didn't know this. Did you know this about being Jewish? Uh, you can get an abortion. I didn't know that. Not, not you, but some woman who's Jewish can get an right. abortion. Because in the Jewish religion, the child is not an individual until it's born up until then it is part of its mother's body okay oh I didn't know that yes and therefore she can do anything with it she pleases and abortion has been legal in Israel since Israel was formed is that right for that reason so what the Supreme Court did the other day was anti-Jew it was anti-woman, I'll tell you that. Well, it was anti-woman, but it's also anti-Jew. I mean, they made this, and it, it Jews should have an exception to it. It's a religious exception. You know, so all well, you, you got to hmm? well, take that to the Supreme Court? No, I'm just going to go out and get a lot of Jewish women pregnant. And Oh, okay, yeah. Whatever. You and me both. You know, well, the Supreme Court never thought about the legal implications of the religious aspects of abortion. The Supreme Court didn't consider a lot of things. They're out of touch. Well, I figure, did you ever see the omen? No. Oh, the the Damien did become president and he did if he were if Damien in in the omen were to have a, a created a Supreme Court, this would be the Supreme Court of Damien's choice. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they are using their own personal feelings about stuff. To make decisions, and that's not right. Right, next they're going to go after same-sex marriage and and contraceptives, and it's just uh, absurd. It's just ridiculous. Well, I don't know if they're going to, but a lot of the states feel that this will allow them to do that. And why, why in the world? What do they? What do they have against contraception? I mean, do they want an, a, a gigantic, huge population like in India, where everybody's climbing over everybody else? Right. I don't think well, they're not pro-life. They're pro-child. They're pro pro-birth. They're not really pro-child. They're pro-birth. They're pro-birth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
uh, and uh, somebody somebody was saying, and it's true, uh, you know, that li- according to them, life begins at uh, at uh, conception, right? And uh, death be- uh, starts when you're facing an AR-15. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just ridiculous. The, yeah. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court made it illegal what to carry sidearms in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't this wonderful? Terrific. Yeah, that's all you need is, is everybody on the subway armed. Yeah, in New York, we really need that kind of law. You know? Right. For 109 years, we have had a law in New York City called the Sullivan Law. Made it illegal to carry a firearm anywhere in New York City. You get up to a year in jail, no questions asked, okay? You go before a judge, the judge... Uh, said they proved that you had a, a firearm on you and he says one year in jail right just like that no questions asked that's right and uh, it's been that way forever now a lot of people don't abide by it you know uh, but if they're found with it we can throw them in jail you know and uh, that they did away with that so the Supreme Court is way out of touch well it, the 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 ones that were appointed by Trump have been uh, right. Uh, I'm not saying that I have anything against a conservative on the court. I have something against a conservative who foists their personal beliefs on us through their determinations of what's right and what's wrong. You know, um, they just didn't like Roe versus Wade. They didn't believe that abortion was was should be legal. You know, and this is the first time I think the Supreme Court has ever taken a right away from people. It's the first time. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a, a right that was given. It's been in effect for 50 years, and now they're taking it back. Right. Now, I don't know if it's a right that they can once again install. You know, right. Uh, given a different court and given another case but I mean geez almighty you know they screwed up they fucked up you know a a woman you shouldn't be able to tell a woman what she should do with her body I know I know because I've tried well have you yes you know for example oh have sex with me (laughs) (laughs) that's a good example Oh, boy. So I'm out of it. You didn't hear what happened to me. What happened? Marjorie and I got COVID. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. What was that? What? When was that? That was uh, shortly after I spoke to you. Well, let's see here. That was about, I guess it was over a week ago, about a week and a half ago. Okay. Shortly after I talked with you the last time, which nobody ever heard because I, somehow I didn't have audio on you. So it's just it's just a, 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 a me mouthing words. Yeah, yeah. So, and I was gonna, I was thinking of getting somebody who was a lip reader to come in <laughs> and translate. And then you know, because my side of the conversation was was recorded. Oh, is that right? Yeah, but it was a problem with um, it was a problem with a setting in uh, Zoom. Didn't oh. you put in new software too? No, I put in a new computer. Oh, okay. And when you do that, even though you've taken all the stuff from your other computer and you put it onto this computer and it loads up and everything's the same way it was, there are some things that kind of get switched on and off. Right. And in the case of Zoom, uh, you got to go back and reset all those things. And I didn't. I didn't find out till that night when I was doing the show and they said, gee, we can't even, uh, we, we can't hear ourselves. You know, we're not on, on the show, our voices. Oh really? Yeah. So it was it was a matter of the output. Go- hey, forget it. It's too much to, you know. Yeah. So I felt very bad about that because you and I, you know, we do two of these. We spend fifty minutes with each other, you know, right. talking and enjoying each other's company. But nevertheless, to have that come to nothing because I can't use it just really infuriates you. It made me feel bad. That's why I wrote you about it. You know, right. I had to confess to it. Right. The subject line was "I fucked up." Was that was that the subject line? Yes. Yeah. Well, anyway, I've been fucking up a lot lately because I'm out of it. But anyway, hey, has Larry been on lately? Yeah. 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 
Did he finally get rid of his flip phone? Oh yeah, uh, no, he, he, you're gonna love this. Our friend, Larry Brown, just doesn't like technology, all right? And so he's held on to this flip phone forever. Right. Right? Uh, and he loves his little flip phone, even though in order to send a text, he has to, like an A, a B, a C, you have to click three times on the first number. Right, you know, right, 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 right. right. So uh, he, um, they wrote him a letter and they said, we're doing away with the phone you've got. It won't be able to pick up the signal of the, the Y. Yeah, my cousin, my cousin had to get rid of her flip phone. She had to get a, a, an iPhone. Yeah. Well, they offered him an iPhone. So he went down to Larry Stahl. You know Larry Stahl? No. Uh, uh, the guy used to hang out with us and stuff. And uh, he, uh, he, he went in the back room and he got one that worked. It was a flip phone. So Larry took that rather than the iPhone they were going to give him for nothing. Yeah, I know. Nod your head a lot. And I That's told, ridiculous. I told him, you moron. I said, to this day, when I do an interview with Larry, and I love doing an interview with Larry, so I, I, I accommodate it. But I have to run a picture of Larry on the screen while I'm talking. Right, right, right. You just do audio. I just do audio. And, you know, I really like to, like with you, be able to see him. It's no big deal, as you know. Right. You know? I mean, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Now, there there is a problem with him doing it on his computer because, oh, God, this is just, it's, it's, it's useless. Because... He doesn't have, uh, uh, what do you call it? A, a, a camera? No, the uh, internet line that isn't, he has dial-up. He still has dial-up? He has dial-up. I didn't think that existed yeah. anymore. I, I think I think it, it's that he's afraid of ruining his image. <laughs> right? And so my, my idea, I bet if we went over, like you and I got together, got on a plane, went to San Francisco, went over to Larry's place, knocked on the door, because we've never seen, nobody's ever seen his place. No, nobody has. Right, but we knock on the door, and he opens it up. I bet inside he's got every electronic gizmo known to mankind. <laughs> but he doesn't want to admit it. Right. You know, so. He's a smart guy. He could do it. You know, he just he, it's it's I don't know it's it's something it's a, something in his DNA that will not allow him to do it, you know, and I you know I don't know that I disagree with him entirely. I mean, I think this whole internet business is useless. Uh, right. Yeah. I mean, everything you have to do, you have to do online now. Yeah. Well, everything you do, you have to do. On, you know, what's worse. I'll tell you. Today, I was trying to get a hold of FiOS, which is my carrier. Okay. It, it seems that up until now, I've had the what they call the Stars a a app and the uh, Epics app. These are two streaming services and two right. services you also get on your cable system. Uh, uh, I, I on those apps, I was able to watch everything. Well, now it comes up. It says Verizon up in the corner, so I know it's connecting with Verizon. But right. Then with certain f videos and stuff, except the main ones, it says. Uh, Sorry, you can't do this unless you subscribe to us. Well, I do subscribe to them. Okay? Well, then you should be able to get it. Yeah. I, I, I have gotten it up until now. So today, I decide I go go to Fios. Now, the only way you can get to, to them directly without going through a whole process of trying to figure out how to get to them is you... Uh, um, have to uh, what's where, where where was I? Um, see, I'm really loopy today. Uh, you have to um, uh, go. To, it, it, so it, I went to them on chat, okay, because the chat was the only thing available. Right. And and they never answer you quickly. Like, hi, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Okay, yeah, here, here. Oh, here's right. my problem. Oh, well, you can't do that. You can't do this. Whatever. So they're telling me now that my traditional subscription which isn't traditional I have the ultimate thing where I get everything okay right uh, is not available is it, it, you can't get that on Roku 
And I went, you're wrong. I could, I could do it until two days ago. Right. You know, and the same thing is true of stars. And I go, <coughs> what is this all about? I'm on, I'm online forever with him. And he's constantly, oh, sorry, got disconnected again. Your Fios, your big technology company, your Verizon, and, right. and you are constantly getting disconnected? What's wrong with your service? Right, no kidding, huh? Yeah. I need to pay through the nose for it. Yeah. This was like Marjorie the other day. She was supposed to pick up her uh, her Apple phone, her iPhone, her right. watch, her watch, because it needed a new battery. And they said, they sent her a thing, come pick it up, but if you can't pick it up in five days, call this number. Well, she had COVID. So she called the number and nobody answered. So then well, Facebook, they have no customer service. Wait a minute. Then she calls, she calls Apple and Apple says, well, let us try and get that number well, for you. Right. And they can't get a hold of this Apple store. Then they call their, uh, uh, their, uh, what was it called? The repair service in Houston, Texas. And Houston, Texas tried to call them and couldn't get them on the line. And I'm going, what if Apple wants to call them and say, hey, there's a bomb in your store, get the hell out of there, and right. they can't do it. I mean, ridiculous. But anyway, this person kept telling me that, oh, well, with the service you've got, you can't use your Roku, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going, and they give me a thing that I can go and subscribe to Epics online. I'm going, I didn't, I haven't had that up until now. I've had all right. that until now. What's with you? What's your problem? Right. You know? Uh, and I was on the phone, I was on the computer for like an hour with this deal. And then I decided to help them, give me your phone number I can call. So they give me a phone number I can call. And it says, well, you can't call this phone number. You got to do our app on your phone, uh, uh, my Fios app, and then you got to make an appointment for us to call you. Right. What is wrong with this picture? You know, whatever happened to the customer is always right. Oh, that went years ago. What are you crazy? And I mean, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm, and now after I'm through with you, I've got a number where they can call me and I want to find out. I mean, I don't get an answer to any of this. Right. O only except, well, no, you've never been able to use Roku to be able to, yes, you have, you moron. And I'm probably talking to some guy in us, I don't know, Azerbaijan, you know, um, who keeps getting disconnected because he really doesn't have files. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, it's this kind of service I can't stand anymore. It's driving me nuts. Right, that's like I, I was hacked twice on Facebook, and I tried to call Facebook, and they have a number that you can call, but nobody answers. What? They have a number you can call, but nobody answers. They must have the same crew working for them that works on the uh, West Side Apple Store. Yeah, no kidding, right? Yeah, I mean, what, they have a number, but you call it, and nobody answers. Right, and it says nobody's gonna, they're not gonna do anything on this number. Um, <laughs> yeah. If they do answer, you go, is this Apple? And they go, oh, I'm sorry, he's not here right now. Right, 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 or, right. Or, or Facebook. I mean, why is that? I don't understand. It makes no goddamn sense to me. You know? Because uh, the customer doesn't matter anymore. It used to be the customer is always right. Now the customer doesn't matter. I've got to do everything for my file service, my Verizon service, online. Right. If I say I'm having a problem, they will check they will check my units here, right? And then right. they'll say, Well, we're gonna fix all that. we're gonna fix that problem and the, I did this once and they fi it fixed it. The machine fixed it. Right. But this is not the case here. This is a case of something isn't working. There's probably something in their system that isn't telling ver isn't telling uh, stars or uh, or, or uh, epics that I subscribe to them. Right, they're, right. They're, Somehow you got lost in the paperwork. The logo comes up when I activate, but uh, somehow it's not recognizing that I have a full subscription to them. It, and you're paying out for it. Oh yeah. Well, the thing I'm thinking of doing, and it, it, I, 
the reason I haven't done it is because it is a lot of work. But I'm thinking of pulling the plug, getting rid of the cable company. Going, going and doing what? Going online because with like, uh, oh, I, my favorite is, uh, is uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Hulu. Uh, Hulu has a service in which you get, for 75 bucks a month, you get every channel you want, including local right. channels and so on. You get all, all the, the, you know, and I, I don't even really need all those, but we do need the local channels. Mar Marjorie likes to watch MSNBC, and so it's on one app, and then you just use that to access stuff. Uh, and then they also give you, in that same package, uh, Disney Plus, uh, Hulu, and uh, ESPN Plus. Which right. I'm already paying. But for you now. still have to. You still have the cable company to get the Wi-Fi service. Well, I have to pay for the Wi-Fi service. That, that, the kind of service I now have will cost me about a hundred bucks a month. But all told, I will be saving about a hundred bucks a month if I start. Oh, is that right? If I start subscribing to all these things individually, a lot of them I'm already subscribing to. Right. But, uh, and you know, I might not do stars or epics. I don't care about them really that much. Right. You know, but I mean, what I came out with was the same price that it'll fit, it was $25 cheaper than I'm now paying for me to pay for every one of the services I now have. Oh, really? Yeah, like HBO Max and whatever. Okay. Right. I added all those together. They came out to 251 My service every month is, is 275 76 and that's wow. before I pay for Netflix and all those other things, which I've included in that original price. So I'm, I wind up saving about $100 a month. Uh, Can't beat that. And since I'm not getting a real service here, and since my internet usually always works, that's the one thing I never have problems with. Right. Once in a great while it goes down, I've had seen it go down, I come back to my computer in the morning and see that it went down during the middle of the night. But you know, what do I need? What do I need the full cervix for? Cervix, yeah. <laughs> that's what. Party and slip there, huh? That's what I said. Yeah. And what do I need the full cervix for? Well, yeah, because it gives you great pleasure. Uh, but anyway, so uh, am I being sexist here? Is there is there something that's improper that I'm doing? I wouldn't know. I don't know what the boundaries are anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I uh, why don't you be the comic that goes up and breaks every boundary? There you go. You know, and just just see how much you can get the people to boo you. See if somebody can jump on stage and try and pounce on you. Oh, I don't want that. Well, you, you, That's I, all I need is somebody jumping on stage and punching me. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, I mean, it, it, today you can probably get somebody to jump on stage and punch you anyway, just for something that you said. You know, there right. may be a joke you Some have. Some innocuous, too. Well, there may be a joke you have in your act that you have no idea is improper that somebody right. will take umbrage at. Right. Oh, that's, uh, that, you can't say that. That's sexist. What? Well, you said he instead of he, her, you know, or something like that, you know? I mean, it must not be fun to be a comic these days. You got to sit there and, you know, the only guy I know who could do his act anywhere and not have any trouble is Larry Bubbles Brown. Well, his, his stuff is borderline sexist. Well, yes, you're right. I stopped, I didn't stop to think about that, you know, but he had a lot of jokes, you know, about women. Oh yeah, a lot of jokes. Yeah. At his own expense in many cases. In most cases. In most cases. Anyway, so that, you know, I mean, I, I, it's not the world we signed up for, guy, you know? No, it isn't. You know, it's not the one we were born into. You were born in what year? 56. 56. Uh, because I was born in 39. Right. So my for, frame of reference is a little different than yours. Right. You know, I grew up in a time when they said it was, you know, it was a sweet, sweeter, nicer time. And I got to tell you, and I'll tell you next time we talk, but it wasn't a sweeter, nicer time. This country has always been full of shit. Oh, isn't that the truth? Yeah. 
I mean, even when we we came back from World War II really full of ourselves. Oh yeah. Then we felt we could save the world. Yeah, but we can get into that next time. Listen, it's as usual. It's always good talking to you. Always good talking to you, Alex. And this time the audio did get recorded. So oh, good. I won't have to write you and say I'm sorry. Well, maybe I'll just have to say I'm sorry for having done this in the first place. But. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Stephen Kravitz. Goodbye, Stephen. Goodbye, Alex. Goodbye, people. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, gee, oh, wow. That was low in the beginning. Okay, anyway, hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, it's Alex, and there's nobody waiting to come on the show, so I think maybe I just won't do one tonight. I mean, you know, I have been feeling a little weak lately, and uh, this would uh, give me perfect opportunity to not feel weak. But I'll wait a few minutes to see if anybody decides to call. Boy, usually by this time there are a couple of people waiting to talk. You know, when I did a show only one day last week after, after having the whole COVID thing, we had tons of people calling, and people who never hadn't called in a long time, and it was, you know, and, and now I'm back again, and here we go. I'm looking here, and nobody is calling. How do you explain that one? Um, but I was saying to um, Stephen about having to deal today with Fios, with Verizon, and trying to get somebody uh, to talk to me. I finally got somebody to talk to me, but I had to go through all kinds of hell to get somebody to talk to me. And uh, when I finally did, I got somebody very competent, but you, you couldn't find out exactly how to get somebody to call you. Uh, they say, go to, your, go to our app and then we will call you. And then you go through all this stuff and it just, they, they do everything they can to make you not want to talk to them because they don't want to talk to you. And that's the way most businesses are now. Uh, it used to be that you had a very easy time calling Amazon, for instance, if you had a problem. And now, my only suggestion to you is go to Google anytime you want something like this and say you want to talk to Amazon, okay? And so what you do is you go to a thing that says Amazon and uh, you, you, on Google, you go, uh, phone Amazon. And they'll come up with a phone number for Amazon or phone Verizon. But that didn't work that well for Verizon. But here's somebody who I'm paying $275 a month to for the lousy, rotten cable service. And um, I can't even get somebody to talk to me. I mean, I would think for that kind of money, they would find somebody to talk to me. But they, 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 uh, you, can't, you can't get anybody to talk to. So uh, I, what I was trying to do is what happened was I subscribe, you know, I subscribe to all the, you know, I have the ultimate package, all right? I, I get everything. I get Showtime, I get HBO, I get uh, uh, the, uh, the things you would get on cable. I get, uh, what do you call it? Epics. I get stars. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of things like that, and um, I decided that it was, uh, you know, be a good idea to to just, uh, uh, you know, then then what I do is I go online. I'm thinking about other stuff while I'm thinking about other stuff. Uh, I go online, and I can go to, uh, for instance, Roku. Will allow me to uh, Roku will allow me to uh, uh, use their app for stars and uh, what do you call it? Uh, stars and, uh, and epics. But now when I go to them, they say, uh, well, yeah, you, you know, it says I'm, it has a little Verizon at the top, like I signed in uh, as a Verizon customer. And they say, yeah, but you can't watch this because you don't have a subscription. And I have a subscription. I'm paying extra for that subscription. They're getting this money every month out of me. So now I'm trying to get a hold of um, the people at uh, the cable company 
to take care of this because it says uh, call your cable company and uh, because you know you have the account with them and they'll sort this out for it just try just try it took me three hours to get not even resolution just somebody was decent enough to say we'll put this uh, in uh, we'll put it in a uh, what do they call it a, we'll write up a work ticket on it oh boy so I mean I have no idea what it is not my fault it's probably not even their fault it's probably the fault of uh, stars and epics but what can I say anyway we have a couple of people here that are ready to talk to us so that's not bad you know it could be worse uh, and uh, it's uh, we have uh, let's see here we have uh, 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 Jeff and we have Brian Neary here two of my favorite people what could be better than this nobody else called I know I get to talk all night now oh sorry and Jeff yeah yeah uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I was okay. I'm painting can, the can, box can you, can you, <clears> wait, <throat> wait, 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 wait a minute hold on a second can you turn your mic down just a little bit is that possible oh, mine yeah Yes. Go in. Go into your Zoom, I think, and go into yeah. the, the the things, the preferences, and then I think you can uh, get it to uh, uh, go down a little bit because you're really. Booming. Oh my God! It's all the way up. Yeah, it's booming. Talk, is that is that better? Oh uh, yeah, that's much better. Much. Okay. Better. Oh, whoops! I put my. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. That's fine. Anyway, what were you saying? Hi, John. What were you saying? Oh, I was just saying, uh, <laughs> I was, I, I found a nice size dance box. You know, it's a box, cardboard box, like perfect size, has, it's like a, a eight by 10 or 12 or something like that. So paper will fit in there and stuff like that. So I, I was trying to find a dance box for Adrian so she can paint it and then she can put all her dance stuff. Whenever she goes, she has the programs with her name in it, you know, start saving all that stuff now. Yeah. And I'm, I'm outside with her painting this knowing it'll take me about 10 minutes i'll come up on the show and then you started saying that nobody's on the show so i had to wrap it up pretty quick with her uh, well you yeah I, I would rather you would spend quality time with the daughter <laughs> you know no we, we uh, finished it we did one code on it so we'll finish it tomorrow but anyway uh there's a guy here by the name of mike rosowski who wants to get in do you any of you know who he is has he ever called the show before Let's, shall we give it a try here? Yeah, let's give it a try. Let's give it a try and see who this person is. Uh, let's see. Uh, it says joining. There's Mike Wasoski. It shows up as uh, Mike Wasoski, and he's connecting to the audio, but he, he's not connected to the audio. Mike, are you connected to the audio? Mike, are you there? Oh, okay, Good we job. just lost Mike. Well, that's what you get for putting your name out there. Yeah. You know, so anyway, uh, so uh, uh, so how, uh, is she? You know, I, I I sent you a note last night, and I just <laughs> yeah, I just you. I feel such warmth for you and 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 Adrian. You yeah. know, don't you, Jeff? Don't you feel that way? Absolutely. She's this, terrific. But but not just that she's terrific, but he's terrific with her. Yes. You know, and and I really appreciate that because I never had any kids. Maybe I should have. I probably would have been a good dad, but uh, I knew you were going to say that, and I thought about that after you sent that message. But and you always talk that it would have been very hard for you to have a career if you had kids when you were younger. And I think you touched so many lives on the radio that I mean, I know for me, I mean, you know, it's all we listened to back then, you know, and a lot of joy listening to you and laughter and stuff like that. So yeah. It's very hard when you have a kid. Everything changes, and then, yeah. So I well, think Adrian's you, really lucky to have you as a father. You yeah. take really good care well, of you her. Well, know, you know what's good about him being a father? How old were you when you first uh, became a father? 48. 48. Wow. Not, wow. A, not a bad time because you got the rest of your life out of the way. You sowed all your wild oats. You know, there was finally time for you to bring somebody else into your life. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. I, so, I, and I know so many of my friends that their kids are like, you know, moved out in college and all that stuff. And 
but they weren't with them that much. And you know, a lot of friends with broken families and stuff. And I knew at this age, I'm good. I've done all my stuff, like you said, and it's great to spoil her with things that I didn't have. And I spoil the other kids the same way. So. Yeah. So, but I mean, I just think it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing that you, you had it at that age. And I think you probably are maybe a much better father for it. Oh, you know, 100%. Than if you were younger and, uh, you know. Yeah, 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 I, I agree. You know, I mean, I, I just never had kids because when I was ready, finally ready to have kids, uh, I couldn't find anybody I trusted to have a kid with. You know, there's a certain trust you have to have having a kid with somebody because you have to make sure that that person's the kind of person that's going to stick around. You know, mm -hmm. she's not suddenly going to decide one day, ah, divorce is easy. Let's go get a divorce, right? And then all of yeah. a sudden, the kid gets pulled into the middle of that. And I didn't have anybody I trusted, you know. Uh, I yeah. yeah. I mentioned once Kathleen, you remember Kathleen used to call the show. Uh, one time she came to me and she thought she was pregnant because she hadn't had her period for about a month or something like that. And uh, uh, she came to me and said, I think I'm pregnant. And I went, Okay, because I, I trusted her. I, I thought she was a decent enough person, you know, that I that if if even if I don't marry her, even if we don't have a life together, I know that I could be in that child's life with her. And that that's um, and so I had that kind of trust with her. So I almost became a father and then she had her period and it was all over with, you know. <laughs> But, uh, and then I never met anybody else after that that I really wanted to have a kid with, you know. And, and Tiffany had two. So I know, you know, right when Adrian was born, I mean, I'm just like along for the ride because I know she knows what to do and, and I trusted her with all mm -hmm. that stuff. So, so it's, it's well, all, my, you, have, my all, life, all but, you have to do for mm -hmm. a wife is, I, I know this from having pets, is you just put a little bunch of cloth down in her bed, like, you know, blankets in her bed and and she can then suckle the children there you know yeah i yeah it's pretty funny when people say oh i have a dog yeah, yeah. they're just like kids i said no no jeff knows that <laughs> well i mean <laughs> it, wow. it, being a father i mean I've, i watch you with her there are times i know you wish you would just go away for a few minutes <clears throat> you know? yeah so to be honest with you <clears throat> uh you know 12 uh sorry 14 and 16 you know the teenage years are very very tough and it's funny because i've had a lot of issues lately with them and <clears throat> my friend our family friend has a, his is 14 and i went over to his house the other night last week just to clear my head and talk to him about stuff that's going on here and uh he's going through the exact same thing you know especially now these days his kid is his son is up in the room you know on the computer all day and, and doing this and you know it's so it the, the teenage years are very, very tough. And, and the bad thing is, since I since I didn't have my mom or dad when I was 13 and on, I was like by myself at my house. Mm -hmm. uh, my I, I don't know how that was, so I can't say, oh, I remember when I was your age and with my dad and all that stuff because I never had that. So it's a lot harder for me to try to relate to them. So mm -hmm. family, so friends, friends really help too. And they find out they're in the same situations too, so. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, uh, it, uh, it, it, not easy. It, it, it's not easy for you especially because those those aren't your kids by birth okay right you're not the biological father of those children but out of uh, out of respect to your wife uh, you've taken on the responsibility and I'm sure you like them and you know you enjoy raising them as well but you picked them up at an age that's not a lot of fun yeah you know yeah they were five and seven when we started and yeah, so yeah, it, it goes really deep, but it, you know, with my <clears throat> with my past and how I thought, yeah, I could have been a lot better if I had more rules and more things in place, more structure, and I had nothing, and I still, you know, still got a good job and and education and everything, but so that's how I start putting more rules in place, thinking, well, I could have done better if I had rules, and then sometimes you have to back off and let them go and and. Well, but, the, but but trying to impose rules on the two kids that aren't yours by birth, okay, is easier is not is much more difficult than putting rules on Adrian, 
yeah, who exactly. you have every right to yell at and say, don't do that, or, hey, good for you, you know. I mean, but you have to be a little more careful, don't you, on how you handle the other two kids? Yeah, because then sometimes mommy gets defensive thinking that, you know, that I'm picking on them, but, you know, I, I'm not. So there are different ages compared to Adrian, too. Have they so ever said Adrian something to you like, you can't say that to me, you're not my father? Never. Never. Good. Speak, Good. Of, the, speak of the devil. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, look. Say hi. What did she bring you? Poop. What? I said, see hi, and she says, poop. Poop. Poop? Yeah, this is the other age. Well, they're, 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 poop is, uh, that's a poopsicle, isn't it? <laughs> it's a, oh, well, there Hey, you. Excuse me. <laughs> close my door. Close my door. Oh, yes. oh yeah, she doesn't. But close then you know, she door. wants me to go in the hot tub later and all this stuff. So, <laughs> I'm like, close my door. I I kind of feel. Come on. I, I kind of feel like we're helping you raise her. <clears throat> you know. Yeah, because then she'll say something like "poop," you know, when I'm yelling at her and something. It's just like, oh my god. So. Yeah. But but you know it, it it's much easier <clears throat> with her than with the other two kids, I would imagine. You know, yeah, and it's you know they're really like Tiffany, where they you know they study in school and stuff, but they don't have much like outdoor interests. So Adrian has outdoor interests like a hundred miles an hour. So for me, it's really easy. You know, take her out. We're going out to hot tub. The other kids, mm -hmm. no, they don't want to. Do that, you know, <laughs> it's like so. So it's hard for me because I'm trying to show as much love as I can to the older two. But then when Adrian, it's just so natural because she wants to do everything I want to do, you know, so so it's a big struggle. You know, you'll start to know you're kind of losing her in a way when uh, she says to your dad, uh, don't leave me off in the front of the school. Leave me off a block away. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. The other two, especially when, with the McLaren, yeah, they don't like that. Adrian loves it. They don't like it with the McLaren? No, but Adrian loves it. So when I get in trouble for driving the McLaren so much, I said, babe, I said, I asked Adrian, what, what car do you want to take? And she always wants to take that. So got to take it. Is it a fun car for kids? Yeah, Adrian loves it. Yeah. She could probably drive it. It's so tight in there, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, I had to blow my nose. Ray, knows. Ray, how many kids do you have? And what? how old are they? Mine? But no, you, Ray, we Ray, can't, you're on mute. Ray, you're on mute. we you're can't hear you. And Jeff, are you how many kids do you have? I have, th uh, I have three kids. And they're gone, 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 right? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, one of them is 30 years old. John Larkin, you don't have any kids, do you? No. 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 Yeah. <clears throat> All Not my friends. I, I would have liked to have had kids, but... You know, it, it, just about every person I would have wanted to have kids with didn't want to have kids with me, and ones that did want to have kids with me, I didn't want to have well, kids. Didn't with them. want to have kids with them. Yeah. 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 No. Well, I, you see, when I was uh, when I was nineteen, I had a girlfriend uh, who was seventeen, and she got pregnant, and she was the first girl I ever had sex with. Okay, what a way to start out your sex life, huh? And she had the kid and gave it up for adoption, which uh, really bothered me because I really would have liked to have had the opportunity to adopt a child. But in those days, you couldn't. They wouldn't let you, you know. So um, I went, that, that really informed a lot of my attitudes about having kids and, and having kids <clears throat> by a woman I could trust and so on and so forth. And so I was very reluctant. I was very careful with contraception <laughs> after that. I would always ask a woman, are you, are you using contraception? And if she didn't, I'd slap on a rubber, you know? I mean, I did everything I could to make sure I didn't have another kid by somebody I didn't want to have a kid by. And I did that for so long that one day I wound up being about 45 and saying, gee, I really should have had kids, you know? And then I started looking for somebody to have a kid with. I think I even did, talked about it on the air. I don't know if any of you remember that. Yeah. And it was kind of, then it kind of got to be the contest of uh, who wants to be the mother of Alex Bennett's child, you know. But I knew I couldn't Rosemary's trust. Rosemary's baby? What? Was that Rosemary's baby? No, 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 no. 
But is my sound working now? Y yeah, your sound is working. Now. Oh, okay. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I have two kids, 19 and 25. 19 and 25. Two boys. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to worry about them anymore, right? <clears throat> well, they're, they live at home. They, they both, uh, yeah, they're all right. They're they, doing good. They live at home? Yeah. Really? Yeah. 19 and 25. Well, I mean, they got, you know, one has Asperger's and the other one has uh, something called Klinefelter syndrome. Well, wait a minute. Let, let's take one at a time. All right. Asperger's. What is Asperger's exactly? And don't give me some kind of joke about it's turds that come out and you make and put them on a bun. Okay. Uh, what 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 is Asperger's? It's high functioning autism. Mm. High, so they it, high functioning autism. So yeah. they're autistic, but not on right. a level that makes them makes life difficult for them. Well, it's, it does make things still difficult, like usually on the emotional scale or social, mm -hmm. ability to socialize, uh, a lot of anxiety often with yeah. people that they don't often understand social cues and stuff like that. Or if they do, it's super hard work for them to. So how does that, how does that play itself out? Yeah. He's he's super smart with computers. He just uh, really really he's a programmer and gaming expert and IS expert. How are his social skills? Though? Not not good. He doesn't not good go anywhere. Well, then he'll probably be really good at computers. Yeah, I mean he doesn't really even really helps. because most of the people I knew were good at computers had no social skills at all. They just yeah. sat there all day eat, drinking Mountain Dew and coding. You know? <laughs> Yeah, well, he eats really healthy, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. Are you gonna make a fortune? Yeah, yeah. And the exactly. other, the other one that just has a, uh, he has something called Klinefelter syndrome, which is an extra. Where extra do they come up with these things? When I was a kid, you were either. Uh, uh, well, you know, Klinefelters uh, is is pr it's just, you have instead of being X Y, you're, you're X X Y. You have two X chromosomes. Okay, but how does that manifest itself in his day to day life? Well, he has to take testosterone shots every three weeks. Uh, really? Yeah, it, you're, you're usually infertile. Um, you have so he's uh, got the some body, learning disabilities usually. Hmm? He's got the body of a male. Yeah. But he's got female hormones or no male hormones. He has one extra female. Okay, okay. Right. all right. Somebody had that I know had a kid with that, but it's very rare. Yeah, it's like one out of 700 live male births. So Are that's you, like one out of 1,400 live that, kids. Not, God, I thought it was a lot more rare. So you say that. you have two. It is rare, actually, when you think about it. Because if you think, well, if you add it up, that means there's probably only like in the whole city of Palo Alto, there might be one or two boys with it. Did you say, did I hear you say that you had three children? No, just two. Oh, two. Okay. Who said they had three children? Yeah. I uh, Yeah. Uh, Jeff. Yeah. yeah, but I also have, now I've got four teenagers, grandkids. The grandkids, oh wow. And they're all teenagers, But they're all probably teenage nice. girls. They must be nice with you and then bad with the parents. <laughs> I, have a business, I have a business manager, Gary, who, uh, he's 90, 84 right now. Uh, but he was he said i really knew i was getting old when i became a great grandfather for the second time <laughs> oh, oh my god when your when your grandkids show up jeff they they remember you by how much money you give them right <laughs> yeah the great thing i've been told and this is probably something you can look forward to brian is the great thing about being a grandfather is that you can see those kids you can Same. dote on them. You can go all with all the thrill of them growing up, but you get to go home without them. Yes. You, you know, and and some people say being a grandfather is better than being a father. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so easy. Yeah. Plus they then bring you presents. That's right. Yeah. So um, it's 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 wonderful, but you know, um, I guess it was Give just. Me you know, I, oh, that's okay. Uh, I said something that I probably shouldn't have said anyway. That wasn't uh, nice to somebody else. Not not anybody uh, here. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
But what, I, what, I, what I'm yeah, gonna, you're allowed to do that once a day. Yeah, what I was going <laughs> to say is that I uh, I don't know that, uh, you know, like I never had any kids. Marjorie never had any kids either. That's the similarity we have. Mm. You know, so it's not like I married her mm. and I had to put up with a couple of, of kids that she had. Mm. Well, I have to put up with her doofus brother, but outside of that, you know, um, but, but I have no siblings. Mm. You know, is Margie uh, also Jewish? What? Is Margie also Jewish? Marjorie. Is Marjorie, Marjorie yeah. also Jewish? Yes, Marjorie is also that's, Jewish. That's how they met. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how they well, met. Well, we met on J-Date, but not everybody on J-Date is a Jew. Oh, really? No. Oh, really? No. Oh. Just, some of them are just women looking for, you know, doctors, oh, yeah, lawyers, so. you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a, that's, depends on how much money you're willing to pay for it. Yeah. 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 J date cost me like nine ninety five a month, but for you eight ninety five. You know. My my grandfather, he had a big Italian family. Uh -huh. And then my mom was the only child and then I was an only child. I have stepbrothers, stepsisters from my father, mm -hmm. but my mom for my mom I was the only child. So when my mom passed away when I was thirteen and they got divorced when I was three I didn't really see my, my, my other father. Then she got remarried just before she passed away. But then he left and with all his girlfriends. So I was, I like on my side, because they've passed, my, my stepfather's passed away now. My biological father's passed away. I had like no family. <laughs> so, you know, the wedding day, you know, when you see like, you know, Tiffany's side and there's like 500 people, <laughs> you come by and the groom side, there's like me and, <laughs> You know, one of my stepbrothers, and that's about it. <laughs> well, she she's from where originally? She's from Vietnam. Vietnam, yeah. Yeah. Uh, was she, she was born was she, there? Was she born during the war? Oh yeah, yeah. And Simon oh. was born there too, the sixteen-year-old. Yeah. Was she born during in the war or after the war? Uh, after the war. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, way after. <laughs> when I ran, when I was in my junior year of high school, <laughs> she okay. was born. I mean, how, is she in age? Is she close to you? Seventeen-year difference. This oh. is your wife. Oh, yeah. you're 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 such a bad person. <laughs> I know. Jesus Christ. God, I used to be given a bad time for going out with women younger than me. You know. But I never think about age. I I never have. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. With her, with anybody else, I've never thought about age. Well, I, I you know I I'd like to think that age doesn't matter. You know, and at, given your age and given her age, it's not a big difference in that she's done a lot of maturing, you know. Yes, exactly. Whereas yeah. I, I had a girlfriend where, you know, she was, I was 23 years older than her. Oh, I remember her. Yeah, so do I. She made you miserable. Well, yes, she did. <laughs> uh, but, you know. She was cute, though. <clears throat> oh, she was uh, adorable. She was yeah. just adorable, I, and and I, I genuinely was crazy about her. Uh, you know what I liked about her? I'll tell you this. She was uh, she was. I started going out with her when she was eighteen. In fact, I took her I took her out to her prom. Uh, but that was that was just a stunt because she happened to be a member of the studio audience. And then she wrote me and said, she said, "Oh, my boyfriend had to leave town before the prom, and I have nobody to take me to the prom." So I'm thinking, you know, let's do a publicity stunt. Uh, so I said, I'll take you. And I got the station to spring for a limo and dinner on, uh, on, on, on Knob Hill, uh, I think at the Pal uh, And then, then we went down to the uh, Palace Hotel where the, where the thing was taking place. And I, so I took her to her prom. But that wasn't when we had a relationship going. But a few, uh, well, I guess about a half a year later, uh, the relationship started and she had turned 18. So I figured, all clear. You know the warning sign was uh, uh, wasn't flashing anymore, and um, I started going out with her. And the thing I liked about her was, yes, she was young, but she knew about old stuff, you know. And so when I, I it wasn't like I had to spend my whole all my life teaching her stuff, you know. Like uh, I always had a joke in those days that I wouldn't date anybody who couldn't name all, all four of the Beatles, you know. And she could name all four of the Beatles without even a hesitation. Uh, so th there was an ability to relate that way. And I, I was the same way when I was a kid. You know, I knew what went on before I was born. 
uh, because I was I was fascinated by hey what was it like before I was here you know so and like you said yeah she she's very mature for her age because she had two kids and she was the only mom you know single mom so you know so that that made it a little a lot better so. yeah yeah and uh, how long have you been married now well we're not officially officially married oh we've been you're together not, for you're almost not a, 10 years remember yeah so almost oh. 10 years why so husband and wife <laughs> okay well why didn't why aren't you officially married i mean not that you <laughs> not in this day and age you have to be you know it's not yeah. a it's not a, 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 a <sighs> it, it, yeah. it, 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 are you reluctant or is she reluctant or is it you just don't care no i'm not reluctant but um no there's just you know these days there's a lot of financial stuff that you know that she gets because she's a single mom you know mm -hmm. uh so say it, leave it at that leave it at that okay yeah so do you foresee yourselves ever getting married eventually or uh yeah i guess <laughs> yeah she has everything of mine you know every time i get this and that you know it's like it's she's the beneficiary for everything i have no family so it's like well i mean it's kind of interesting because i mean uh um uh, it, it, it if you something happens to you is she taken care of yes, yes okay yes, yes. all right yes. yeah. uh because yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. 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 It, 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 you know but i mean the only reason to get married is for i guess adrian you know but does she yeah, ever... and that and that is one thing that we said when it was early was that we said you know i want to wait till adrian can remember it you know so and so then it's been now you know she's six years old she can remember it so does she but now, does, yeah. does she ever ask about it? it 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 comes up sometimes oh adrian yeah uh yeah sometimes yeah yeah even stephanie even when she was younger stephanie used to bring it up all the time so yeah yeah because i mean it's obvious that you have a successful relationship you know yeah it's rocky but it, oh, it's the, the, all, the, it's name, all the rocky. name one that isn't <laughs> You know, and I'd be worried. Tuesdays. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm making a living out of getting ten dollars every time Marjorie tells me to go fuck myself. You know, and so it's it's like, uh, you know, uh, uh, no no uh, relationships are easy. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, uh, you know, you, you, you it, it, it seems like it seems good. You seem happy. You know. And then you got that that darling child, you know, amazing, yeah. amazing child. Yeah. What else is going on in the world? You know, Brian, um, in France, I'll just bring this up because I'm connected there. Uh, couple, seventy percent of couples uh, have kids before they get married. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yep. Really? Yeah, because it's actually that. financially advantageous to not get married in France. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, you know, I mean, look, being married is not a necessity, you know, uh, but a relationship is a necessity, and a re relationship to each other is, is a necessity. Eating all what were you going to say, though? Alan? You, you said that I was just going to say, is there anything else in the news? Well, yeah. you know, it's the same old stuff, you know. Yeah, I mean, you've been talking about Brian and Adrian, and she's very good and He's a great father, but it's been a half hour now. <laughs> hey, listen, That's we've got, got, to we've got to... believe it or not, in the last half hour, we've had more people listening to this than usually listen to this program. Wow. That's great. Yeah. So apparently, That's great. apparently, let's the... continue to talk about Brian and Adrian. Well, no, I think, I think <laughs> yeah. we can move on to other stuff. Is there anything you wanted to bring up? No, I just, the Supreme Court. You know, some of their uh, things that are going on today, they uh, are allowing uh, co companies to continue to pollute at higher rates like Trump wanted mm -hmm. and lowered the protections of the EPA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I couldn't believe like, that. Yeah. Like, you know, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like Damien grew up and appointed the Supreme Court. OK, yeah, exactly. you, you know, I mean, this is the Supreme Court from hell. It is. I mean, I mean, it, it, I mean, kids today, Adrian and, and his other kids and stuff are going to have to grow up in a world with these idiots and these idiot laws and stuff. Well, they may have just enhanced global warming is what they've done. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they did. They care more about the corporations, the, the 
the, the fuel companies than they do about the environment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, John had his hand up. Yeah, they, they got to pack the court. What do, what do they have to do to pack the court? They you have know, to add another justice. They need they, a super they could majority. Add four. They could add four more, but what do they have to do to do that? Super majority in Congress, in, in the Senate. Really? Not going to get it. Uh, no, I don't think so. No? No, I, I think he can I think he can just do it. I, I, I think he can. No, he doesn't want to say he's going to do it. If they do away with the filibuster, then he can do it, because then the, the, the Republicans can't filibuster it. But guess who was, it was pro-filibuster when he so, was in the Senate? Joe well, Biden. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. He yeah. is. He's, he, he, you he know who was... But that's when they had to actually filibuster. Well, that's when they used to, you know, used to have Mr. Smith goes to Washington and they had to get him give a speech and give it for the 24 hours, you know. Yeah. So they Does the Constitution over. say how many the maximum are for Supreme Court justices? There's no constitutional <laughs> limit on that. He could have 200. So you know? if, if a Republican comes back in, they could put another 10 in there. <laughs> yeah, that's the building. They building. Would. It's kind of a catch twenty two. You know, I so. just think I, I just think that maybe we have to put the uh, the Supreme Court on notice and think about it, it, trying to impeach a couple of them. You know, yeah. because they yeah. did lie to Congress. I mean, that's a crime. Yeah. That's a crime. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they were under oath. Yeah. Now maybe you know it won't go through because you know the Senate has to vote on it and so on and so forth. But that uh, that shouldn't stop us, you know. No, I agree. And because it, 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 these people feel that, oh, hey, I can do this now. I can. I, I I've always been anti-abortion. Now I can do something about it. How long has it been since we impeached a Supreme Court justice? Never. No, I I think they did like in the the early 1800s because he was he was a drunk or something. Yeah. He could never stay sober. Drunk. Yeah. No, but this guy could never stay sober, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I hate to think about it that way, but, you know, the fact is these people lied to get their job, and they okay. lied in a, in, under under oath, okay? They lied under oath, and that should be enough to say, okay, guy, you know, here. You're in trouble. You're talking about Amy Coney Barrett and the other and what? Yeah, when name? they all said that, oh, well, we're yeah. not going to change uh, Roe versus Wade because that's that's, uh, no, it's, that's settled it's, law and it's uh, you know precedent yeah. and so on. Blah 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 bullshit. I didn't believe them when they said it. No. It's not a question of not believing them. They're under yeah. oath. They should be telling right. the truth. Right. But well, then the minute they change their mind. That's yeah. no, they no. They but they mind. didn't wait ten minutes to change their mind. You know, it was like their mind was made up ahead of time, okay? Probably. And Trump knew exactly what he was doing. Mm. I mean, now, here's another part about it that kind of gets me: is that 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 uh, uh, Donald Trump couldn't give a shit about abortion. That's true. Right? Okay, He's probably caused ten of them. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, I don't think he cares money. about it, but he wanted to care about it because this was a guy that got up every morning and said, "How can I make people's lives miserable?" I really I think so. Up the world. He huh? just wanted the power. He he just wanted the power. You know. I mean, if I think, he did, if Democrats were stupid enough to have elected him, he would have been a Democrat. But he realized yep. they're not going to elect me, so I got to go with the Republicans. You yeah. know, I, I, I think that he was used to snapping his fingers and people did things. And when he got in office, he snapped his fingers and then he ran into the Congress. Because the first two years, he had total control. And they couldn't get the wall built. They couldn't do a lot of things. Congress, even the Republicans, wouldn't go his way. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is that he, uh, uh, I, while he was in office, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad Phil isn't here because then he would filibuster. Um, <laughs> but let's be honest, the Trump didn't do anything while he was in office. He no. didn't accomplish he, anything. Just a big tax cut for the fucking corporations and the fat cats. Yeah, yeah, but That's nothing, it. he didn't really accomplish much of anything. No, you know, but but all. then again, neither is Biden. No, you know, no, uh, Biden gave a lot of no, tax. Biden's got a real a real problem. You know what you should do, yeah. by the way, John. I'm thinking, you what? should uh, get a tissue and clean the lens on your on your camera yeah. because you are fuzzy. 
unless you I, feel I think it's the light it's the light in my apartment let's see here wait a minute now, that, that if you keep the cloth over the well, camera you look a lot better now they <laughs> it, 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 it's Dang, it's, it's, a little, it, it's a little yes. clear it's clear yes, it looks clear you see That's it's that light. light up there look, it's the yeah. light above him yeah. it looks like a god I know. Yeah, <laughs> now you see that's much cleaner. Yeah, turn it off. Turn I, I, it off. I know we had we had remember when we had to have Tony clean his lens Tony. and all of a sudden yeah, I remember. we could, we could <laughs> see Tony. Yeah. You know. And then we wanted to plug it back up. But now I got that fucking light that goes on a, off on a timer. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you buy a clapper? You know? Yeah, well that is a clapper. It's oh, it a, is? Oh, okay. A clapper yeah. thing. Wow. Yeah. Why I'm but going all like I'm saying is that, that that you know, I mean uh, it, it, it this is a guy who who I, in the case of Biden we got a problem with a guy who's done nothing he is just totally one of the most ineffective presidents you could possibly think of having and He's I you know I, I know that it's better than Trump but Trump at least got a few things accomplished well, um, I, I, I mean I, as I as I yeah. said it is not Biden's fault that we have higher prices and it's not Biden's fault that uh, we are uh, uh, in a recession. In a recession. Mm -hmm. It's not Biden's fault that gas prices have gone up. It's none of those are his fault. But where I do fault him, he's done nothing to correct them. That's right. You know, yeah. and yep. and 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 he seems like he is at a his wit's end as to how to solve these problems. You know, the other day the teleprompter stopped and he had to walk out of a meeting and and I he probably won't run again. No, uh, they're they're saying he's already working on plans for another run. Uh, but don't do us any big favors, Joe, because then Trump will win again. Yeah. Yeah. I saw um AOC on uh uh, Col uh, what's his name? Colbert. Oh, uh, Colbert. Yeah. yeah, she's pretty fucking sharp, man. Oh yeah. Oh, I thought I you. Were, I thought you were going to say she's pretty fucking hot, which is she true. is hot too. <laughs> that too. You know, I, 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 I don't want to say that because that would be terribly improper of me, but I do her. Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, well, I'd I do could... Marjorie Taylor Greene if you could put a ball gag in her mouth. <laughs> oh, She's got a horse face. I wouldn't touch that. I heard she likes no, ball gags. I, I have to say, I said to Marjorie the other day as I was Good looking one, right? at, at OAC, she was on, I think, Meet the Press. I said, you just can't get away from the fact that she's drop dead gorgeous. Yeah. You know? That she's really a very, very attractive woman. If she ran for president and got elected, she would definitely be the hottest president in the history of presidents. Yeah, well, well the New Zealand woman is gorgeous, too. Mm -hmm. The New yeah. Zealand woman? Oh, yeah, I've seen her. Yes, yeah, she is. She's, she's really hot. Quite, quite attractive. Yeah, yeah. By the way, we've been joined by Jack Bishop, who has uh, decided to grace yeah. us with his, uh, with his presence as soon as he connects his audio. Uh, there we go. Here. You got your Zoom stuff down. Well, got something down. I don't know about that. <clears throat> I want to point out something. Mm -hmm. You know, we were talking. You guys were talking about uh, Biden hasn't done anything. I'd like to remind you of what uh, Dwight Eisenhower once said about being president. Do you remember that? What did he say? <laughs> it's no. two years old. What day is it? No. He said at the end of his first uh, term he said sometimes the president is just there we forget that uh, even back then the president couldn't get shit done if congress didn't give him people to work with yeah. mm -hmm. well i mean you can use that as an excuse jack but you, presidents are also you know very good at being cheerleaders Yes. You know, and it's a very important part of their job. I think that Obama was a terrific cheerleader. I yeah. thought that when he gave a speech, God damn it, you, you wanted to go out and buy his soap, you know? But conversely, conversely, people who, who, who wrote in the 1870s, uh, uh, 80s, and 90s about Lincoln said Lincoln was a terrible speech giver, great writer, but couldn't deliver a speech. For, uh, having a paper well, man. we don't know because we never have heard a recording. Heard the recordings it. did not just, exist. They did describe his voice, and it sounded Very, like it was pretty. It was high pitched. 
high pitched yeah. kind of annoying. Mm -hmm. They said it was and somewhat I, effeminate. Having problems yeah. delivering speeches. Yeah. And you forget that you're living in the most media conscious age ever. That we've ever but, been. That's right. So maybe we ought to just elect actors. No, media we, toxic. We tried that. Media toxic, Jack. Media toxic. I'll give you that word, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, uh, we've got uh, probably going to have a guy uh, running down here in Texas for the governorship who is a Hollywood star. Beto O'Rourke. No. No? Who? Uh, 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 McCona McConaughey. He's going to uh, run? Matthew, Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. He's probably yeah. going to run. When? Uh, Not this year. Uh, um, let's see. I think Texas had... He's going to run for the Texas governor's office. But that, that happens this year in 2022. That, that happens in 2022. And uh, don't think for a minute, if he's going to do that, don't think he hasn't got his eye on the presidency after that, if he wins. Do we want people who are actors? Reagan. I mean, look, I mean, uh, Reagan, I thought was a terrible president. Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger was was... He tried to be a good governor. He just didn't know how to. Well, Schwarzenegger could never be president because he's not a see, native born. See, he, here, here's the most perfect. Per, who's the most perfect person to run for president? Right now, Gavin Newsom. No, no. Well, there, there there's a hint to what, who should run and who make the best presidents. Governors, yeah, California. governors. Yeah, not uh, senators, no not senators. Senators yeah. are used to bargaining mm. and, 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 and 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 making mm. laws and passing bills and doing stuff like that. Yeah. Governors do everything a president does on a smaller scale, <laughs> and so that that's kind of the training ground for a president. And look and, at the presidents we've had who 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 have made their mark i mean clinton certainly made his mark he certainly was a very popular president uh, um, uh, reagan on the other hand yeah he was a governor uh well forget that i just blew my whole theory yeah, yeah except cool. for, well reagan although reagan although california is like the sixth or seventh largest economy in the world what? so it's yeah. almost like running the country how, how do you how do you think gavin newsom you guys out in california well yeah you and brian and Ray or out of California, mm -hmm. and John Larkin. God, I got a California show today. Um, uh, uh, how, how do you think Gavin Newsom would do against Donald Trump? He'd kill him. You yeah. think? Yeah, he'd I think he'd be great. Kill him. I know. I know. New. I knew them was considering running uh, a while back, and they did some like study, and they realized he couldn't win, so he didn't enter. The how race. do they know? Who knew that how? Donald Trump could win? Yeah, how's Trump going to run when he's him. in prison? I heard that he just formed a committee a couple of weeks ago. Who? Yeah, Gavin Newsom. Yeah, to, uh, just to, trying to, to make yeah, it's another com yeah. Mm -hmm. Just another. He did it eight stuff. years ago too. And you know, he'll be raising money when he's in jail. Except you know? for except for Gavin Newsom's pretty powerful right now because he beat re Recall, and he's going to probably get voted back in. You uh, know, those people who try to get him on the Recall, they don't want you know equal rights for gays and all those things. So. He's not going to get their vote anyway because he is so pro, you know, help, helping out all you know, civil rights and everything else. So well, I he's, not get the, he's not going to get that vote anyway. So fuck him. Right? I think, you know, I you know, think Cal he has an advantage. OK. And the advantage is the rest of the country isn't that aware of Gavin Newsom. So when he suddenly appears and starts giving speeches and is a good looking guy and he's, you know, he's Hollywood material, yep. uh, he could very well do good as soon as he presents himself to the rest of the country however nobody in california will vote for him but i mean the rest if, of the country if you it took, fact, right. if, if you you took right. the la la area san hmm. diego area bay area and sacramento area out of the state of california you'd be a red state because there's a lot of republicans in outlying areas that's that, that, true huh? yeah. that is, is very it? true it is yeah, even even in the bay area there's republican Enclaves you, that are super. You go up to you go up to Reading, man. They've got Proud Boys running like the, yeah. the whole city Absolutely. council up there. Yes, yeah. yeah. but I, I I think that New, Gavin Newsom would probably do okay because the rest of the country doesn't know who he is, and they'll discover him. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. this is going to sound ridiculous, but he needs to get the nodes operated on it in his throat because you hear how he sounds. It's I haven't awful. heard him that much lately. But oh, he's just, his voice is just trashed. He needs to get it fixed. It's, yeah. It, it, yeah. But he, he's well. a, you know, I, he's definitely a choice. But yeah. they say that Biden is making moves and trying to get the money to run again. And I'm going, you know, Biden, if you cared about your if you cared about your party, you wouldn't run again. Too right. old. Well, it isn't even a matter of too old. I mean, just his mental he, he's mentally too old. That's yeah. I I think yeah. he's mentally too old. Yes. But because not, Trump is old too, but Trump I even though Trump's not that smart, he seems to be more on the ball. Jack, would you vote for Gavin Newsom? Well, as a matter of fact, I would. But my sister worked for Gavin Newsom mm -hmm. in one of his uh, uh, nonprofit uh, corporations, mm -hmm. and she had nothing but good things to say about him. I met him one time at a cocktail party. I was impressed. And uh, but do, you know, do you know who will vote for him? Every gay in America. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Every gay in America, because who came up with, with gay marriage? Gavin Newsom, Gavin when he was Newsom. in San Francisco. Absolutely. Did it when it wasn't popular. And, Actually, and he's, marijuana, too. He's, but he started the notion of gay marriage, absolutely. which is now, of course, the law of the land. This week. Gavin Newsom. Well, I'm going to put a, a turd in the punch bowl. Okay, here we go. Ruin our party. Oh. Go ahead. Oprah Winfrey. Oh, God. Oh, God. No, no, no. Please, no. no. You know, Hillary Clinton. Oh, God. Oh, She's God. got too many skeletons in the closet. Is Oprah a billionaire? Oh, yeah. And I think, I think I she, if she isn't, she's she's kissing it. Okay. Yeah. You know. But look, she's a, tra she's a woman. She's a black woman. She's a celebrity. Well, so what if she's a black woman? We've already had a black president. Yeah, okay, isn't that man. enough for you, Jack? Well, Oprah, Oprah's oh, are, worth two point five billion. Are you, about, are you talking about America's first black president, Bill Clinton? Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oprah's worth two point five billion. Is she? No. Yeah. Where did she get all that money hey, from? Get, give me a divorce. I found my next old lady. <laughs> Some 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 websites say she's three worth three billion. So somewhere hey, Donna, between two point five and three point. Boy, she has a lot of fuck you money, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you know, I'll tell you I'll tell you what why I wouldn't vote for Oprah among other things. She's the one who brought us Doctor Oz. Oh, oh yeah, Emmett yeah. Oz. Yeah. That's two strikes against the bitch. Yeah. How, how old is Oprah? I don't know. She's, she's in her 60s. In her 60s, yeah. Where yeah. we're not. She's in her 70s. I, I think she's in her 70s. Yeah. You know, I inter interviewed, it was, it was a really interesting guy. Is Oprah's uh, a boyfriend. Uh, yeah. Uh, Husband. Uh, what's his Oprah name? Oprah's 68. Yeah, what's his name? Uh, uh, what the hell's that guy's name? Yeah, that guy. Yeah. Uh, Gail the, was the guy. And I was impressed yeah. by him. He was a very intelligent, decent guy. I liked him. A lot. Uh, I can't remember his name, but you know, it uh, Stedman. 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 Uh, interesting guy, you know. And I have to hand it to him because they uh, they're still going together, right? I'm not mistaken. I don't know. They, they're still so. they're they're still uh, associated with each other. I haven't seen anything in the tabloids about them in in several years, though. But I mean, you don't see anything against them. You know that they're not with each other. They are together. It says here. It where? Where does it say that? Uh, on a bunch of websites. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I just want to know how come they haven't gotten hitched. Well, we we're getting we get back to Brian here, you know, who's not married, but has a beautiful what five year old child now, uh, by the woman he lives with. Uh, and we were talking about whether you need to be married these days. I mean, uh, I, I, I like having the piece of paper. Why? I don't know. I just do. I, I think it's a it's a public commitment. Marjorie and I did it this way. She proposed to me on uh, a leap day. Because on a leap day, mm -hmm. women can ask guys to marry them. Okay. So she asked me, "Would you marry me?" And oh. my answer to her was, "Why not?" 
<laughs> you romantic dog, you. you Why not? That way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. but, I just I, like I, I just like the public commitment. You, you know, know the, it's not to me. It's not a public commitment. To me, it's it's about religion. Getting married. Yeah, but I've been publicly committed four times already, Jack. Oh, so how right. so much for public commitment? Yeah. You know. So, yeah, I, for, I I forgot that you are not just a three time. Uh, loser. Yeah, I've been married four times. Yeah. You yeah. four time offender. Yeah, I mean this yeah. is my this is my most successful marriage, but it's only because both of us are so old. Where yeah. else can we go? You but know. You used to say you you married the first time. For, you used to say this on the show. I remember. You married the first time for lust. Yeah. The second time is for love, and the third time is companionship. But you're on four or five. So I don't know. I don't know what those two are. It's it's companionship in old age. <laughs> no, I mean, I have to say that our marriage is different than my marriage would have been when I was in my 20s. But don't you think that every marriage changes every few years? Yeah, I think that's good. Yes, I mean, marriages evolve. Yeah. Yeah, they, there's no question that they evolve, but I haven't gone through one that long that I can give you that answer. Well, well let's see. Have you ever totaled up how many years you've been married? Well, I went for a long time without being married. Well, I mean, how many yeah. how many years with your four marriages so far? First have you marriage, been married? first marriage was less yes. than a year. Okay, so right. there's one. We'll give you one. Okay, a clap. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, second <laughs> marriage to Ronnie lasted. I don't know, even even after we were no longer living with each other, I would say about eight years. Okay, so that's uh, nine. Oh. My oh. third marriage to Susan oh. lasted about, I'd say, six years. And then a, that's, a that's, couple that's, of more that's... years, a couple of more years because uh, we were we were not living with each other, but we hadn't filed for divorce. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can we say 16 there, 16 years total? Yeah, let's <sighs> say that. And you and uh, girlfriend have been together how long now? Oh, we've been together. Uh, be, 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 well, this we're, we've been married. Um, just, just take married for eleven years, I think. Oh, now <clears throat> that means yeah. the marriage that I'm currently in. Yeah, I have been married to one person longer than you've been married to all four. <laughs> Me too. I've been married twenty-eight years. Well, I think it's time for you to get oh, wow. a divorce. What? And have to start all over again at my age? You're out of your damn mind. <laughs> I'll never get another one broke yet. <laughs> but Don and I have been together, we've been married 35 years. Really? Oh. Yeah. And Peggy, who, the wife that I was first married to, mm -hmm. who died, uh, we were married uh, five years when she died. So, you know. I, so that wasn't a long marriage. I always got the feeling that was a much longer marriage. No, uh, it was. Yeah. It was uh, sadly uh, cut too short. Yeah, 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 and I didn't get married uh, until I was 35, 36, something like that. Yeah. Got it. Well, I have a friend who had sex with a woman one night, and she dropped dead while they were having sex. Oh, wow. You have a story like that, too. Uh, yeah, me. yeah. Huh? Hey, hey that, ha that happened to my favorite uncle. That happened to your favorite night? Well, I'll tell you, yeah, I'll tell you yeah. something. He yeah, said, yeah. I said, did that put you off of sex for a couple of years? He said, quite a few. Oh, wow. <laughs> can, we, can we give it to Larkin tonight? He's got the Santa Claus beard going. You guys yeah. have been trying to grow yours for a while, and look at Larkin. He's ready for Santa Claus. Well, Larkin is, is going to give Kevin a run for his money soon. He can do Santa. Yeah, he, I agree. It looks, <laughs> and his face just looks perfect. He can do Santa yeah. this year. Yes. Yeah, no, I know, and I got the Santa glasses, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I know. Hey, listen, I got to get out of here. I got to show you. Yeah, I know you got to go. Say bye. Later, bye dude. bye to Jack Bishop. Thank you, Jack. Thanks to uh, Jeff Stein, and thanks to Brian Neary, and thanks to John Larkin, and thanks to Alan, and thanks to Ray. Nice group tonight. Boy, this is, uh, this is how I Don't like it, you know? Screaming. And it got a lot of people watching, more than we normally have. So I really Oakland like Days, it. Oakland Days got the go-ahead to build a stadium. Or yeah, I saw that. Who, yeah, who, got, a, who got the o go Oakland go Days got the uh, okay to build a new stadium. O on, uh, the Oakland what? A's. Oh, A's. 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 I thought you said the Oakland Gays or something. No, A's, yeah. They yeah. were going to they they 
maybe move to Las Vegas, but the anyway. guy's Thank you, There's John. Thank you, John. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, John. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, <laughs> I'm just getting too old. Anyway, everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I will give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. There they go. Let me just uh, hang up on them here so that I don't have to deal with them anymore. Uh, listen, Jack Bishop is next over most of the same GabNet. He's got the intersection. He takes your calls at um, with Skype at GabNet Live. Skype, GabNet Live. In the meantime, I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Night, everybody. Yeah, see, we finally got the logo up.